What's up you amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So I wanted to give you guys a program on integrity that I really like. And I also wanted to give you guys a really concrete attack strategy that you can use. Now I'm not promising you guys will find bugs with this strategy. But, I will, but what I am promising is that you guys will have a strategy that you can use as a starting point. I expect you to build off of this. I took the path least walked and I expect you to do exactly the same. So let's get right into it shall we. Now we have Port of Antwerp here. I've presented this on the channel already before, but let's quickly summarize it again. So the Antwerp Port Authority has a key uh, role in the port's day-to-day -day operation. The Port Authority manages and maintains the docks, the bridges, the locks, the quay walls and the land. The personnel is re also responsible for safe shipping traffic in the docks, the bridges and the locks. In addition, the Port Authority provides tugs and cranes carries out dredging work and promotes the port at home and abroad. As for bounties, you guys can see that we have responsible disclosure here. Um, a couple of domains in scope, you have star.cpoint.be and star.port.antwerp.com. Uh, um, as you can see, no bounty for these URLs. And then you have some network IP ranges. <coughs> as for those IP ranges, we'll get into a strategy for that later. I mostly want to focus on the URLs right now. So as you can see in scope, the use of an integrity.me address is mandatory at all times. I will put the article in the description below as well about the integrity.me email address. Um, and they are specifically looking for leaking of personal data, horizontal or vertical privilege escalation and SQL injection. As for the out of scope, there are some domains out of scope, jobs.portofantwerp.com. Out of scope actions are doing registrations on the website without using the use of an integrity.me address. And for the application, we have a whole bunch of stuff. So guys, make sure that you read those. Now again, um, automated scanners not allowed. So make sure that you do account for that. Um, and they offer a safe harbor for research, research, researchers, damn it. <laughs> so we have a severity assessment here. Um, pretty basic, go over it if you're interested in this kind of stuff, but make sure that you keep in mind that for each company, these impacts can be different and for each impact, it really differs as well. Stored XSS, um, if you have a stored XSS without user interaction, but it's pretty useless, like say on a website that you cannot steal anything, of course, it's going to go down to a medium or a low. Now, Port of Antwerp is following the severity assessment as outlined in this article, which I will also link in the description below. Now, uh, for the FAQ, for the credentials, they don't offer any current credentials. Now, as you can see, there, they have a star dot target. So we're going to go into um, a script that I wrote. Well, not a script, a checklist more um, for multi-target recon. We have some subdomain enumeration things that you guys can do. Um, you can also go uh, check if those subdomains are live afterwards using the HT probe. Uh, and optionally, you can also um, use this script that we, I think, let me open it real quick. This script is going to add HTTP in front of all of the lines if you don't have that already. Now you also have subdomain flyover. This will make screenshots of all of the sub different subdomains that you send it. Uh, and you have a vulnerability scanner that you can run on it, but this is not allowed. So don't run these. Then you have directory brute forcing also not allowed. JavaScript analysis. This is local, so this is allowed. And then port scanning again, not allowed. So um, that's it for multi-target recon. Find your subdomains, see which ones you can attack. And then we can move on to the next stage, which would be, I have some checklists for you guys for um, the hunting specifically as well. So you have s for your session specifically, you can make a user with every role, but that's not going to be applicable here, I think, since they don't offer test credentials. Um, I don't think any of these sessions are going to be applicable, but if you find something that might be applicable there, feel free to. As for stored cross-site scripting, um, one tip that I can give you guys for every single input field that's stored, try like an HTML entity. Um, if it doesn't get obfuscated or if it does get obfuscated, I mean go deeper. If it doesn't get obfuscated and it gets reflected as a link, for example, here, you can try to add on some error, some JavaScript handlers for that. Um, if anything catches, go deeper. And I've also included a video for you guys on that. 
So for the reflected cross-site scripting, I also have some tips as well. You can check the error pages, 403 pages, 404 pages. Sometimes they contain reflected values. Integrity did an awesome challenge video on this, uh, an awesome XSS challenge on this a while ago. And f you can trigger this 403 by example by going to the .httx file. I believe this is because certain web servers um, see anything with the dot as forbidden. So uh, you can try that and uh, of course you can also try every reflected parameter that you can find videos again in the checklist itself. As for DOM cross-site scripting, uh, I would not recommend looking for this manually. It will take a whole lot of time unless you really know what you're doing. Burp, sp uh, Burp Suite Spoke Scanner can do that, but um, there are some tools as well like the RAW2 DOM XSS scanner. And I also have some videos for this. Um, again, for the cross-site scripting filter evasion tips specifically, these are a little bit lacking. So if you have any, feel free to make a pull request and add to them. For now, I can say you can replace the less than and gre greater than signs with HTML entities. And you can also try some XSS polyglots. Now, as for CSRF, um, specific tips I have for you is you can check if there is a CSRF token. Check if the token changes, if it's still accepted. Um, if you... Uh, give it a random token if you drop the token if the server still accepts those requests and again i made a video for you guys about that as for the cookies some things you guys can check for some specific header flags some domains uh, if they are checked for that cookie um, if the cookie are reflected if they are reflected anywhere on the page or as a get parameter because that might be interesting for cross-site scripting you could steal those cookies if they are reflected on a page somewhere and you can get a cross-site scripting attack there. It might be a really interesting attack factor to look at because it will raise your severity, of course. You can maybe even do an account takeover if you manage to get the right cookie. Now, as for iDoors, a couple of tips I have for you guys is try going directly to objects you have no right to that are on the same level of authentication as you but that's not going to work here so what you can do is just if you find a system that allows registration just make like two accounts and then try to um, if you see like an object being referenced by an identifier you can try any of the techniques I outline in the videos to see if you can access those um, objects while you're not supposed to be able to as for SSTI, I don't have that many tips. You can try to inject some, um, some attack factors here, but I would recommend looking further into this if you're interested. As for XXE, for every single XML input that you see, you should try XXE. I have some videos in here as well. You can try them out yourself. For chaining cross-site scripting, I have some tips for you as well. So maybe you can try to use cross-site scripting to steal a non-HTTP only cookie. Maybe you can use it to write, overwrite a cookie on a different path. Like say, for example, you have a session cookie working on the slash path, um, but your web application runs on slash web uh, on that different path. You can insert your own cookie maybe into there and uh, insert your own session that way. Maybe you can use sessions that never change together with a cross-site scripting to steal those cookies. Uh, for an eternal account takeover that would up your severity because if the session never changes and you manage to get that session cookie you can take over the account a lot longer than just once and maybe you can use cross-site scripting to steal info displayed on the page like GDPR issues PII, PII issues um, this is supposed to be not pill so I'll change that afterwards of course some videos in that as well as for chaining CSRF, maybe you can find somewhere to chain a CSRF into an XSS. So let's say you have a self XSS vulnerability. Maybe if it doesn't have a, a CSRF token on it, maybe you can use that vulnerability to insert a cross-site scripting and tag factor. As for chaining IDORs, I also have a tip for you there. Sometimes programs use UUIDs, so let's say for example a random long string as you can see here, and you can find an IDOR on it. It will be of course lower impact because you cannot easily guess this ID and that's really important. If it would be like one, two, three, four, five, any attacker can just change it in the URL and uh, try to get an IDOR that way. But if it's like this random, you're going to need a very, very strong brute forcer and it's pretty much impossible to brute force. Believe me, I looked it up. 
Um, so if you want to chain this, you might be able to find an endpoint that displays all of these UIDs. And if there's an IDOR and, or I should say a broken access control on that endpoint, you can chain those and maybe up the severity of your vulnerability. So pretty long list if you guys want. All of the links will be in the description below. Tell me in the comments, did I miss anything that you guys checked? Because I'm really interested and I want to update this list as much as possible. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.